Hi, kindergarten friends. It's Mrs. Butterbaugh back with some more science for you. In your newest packets, you would have seen some information on chickens. I have a story for you that I want to share that's called, that are, that's called Chickens Aren't the Only Ones. This story is by Ruth Heller. It is a scholastic story and I have their permission to share it with you. Chickens aren't the only ones. I wonder what that title could mean. They aren't the only ones. Chickens aren't the only ones. Chickens lay the eggs you buy, the eggs you boil or fry or die or leave alone so you can see what grew inside naturally. Chickens aren't the only ones. Every bird, wild or tame, does the same. The ostrich lays the largest egg, the hummingbird the smallest. Chickens aren't the only ones. Most snakes lay eggs and lizards too, and crocodiles and turtles do. Looks like there aren't the only ones to lay eggs. And dinosaurs, who are extinct, but they were reptiles too. Frogs and toads and salamanders lay eggs. And when they hatch, they're tadpoles who grow legs and climb a lily pad, just like their mom and dad. They don't have claws or scaly skin. They are called amphibians. Fish eggs float up to the surface or sink to the bottom of the ocean floor. This mother seahorse lays her eggs into the father's pouch. He keeps them there until they hatch. Then he's through. I think that's nice of him, don't you? These fathers too are helping out by guarding eggs protected by that foamy mass that's floating by and they won't leave until they're sure that all the eggs have hatched. These don't look like eggs to me, but they were laid in the sea. This one by a shark, and this one by a ray is a mermaid purse, they say. The octopus is said to shed 100,000 eggs and then to hang them up in strings attached to rocks or caves. The moon snail's eggs are mixed with sand to form this collar looking band. Spiders wrap their eggs in sacks and snails you know are very slow, but they lay eggs that hatch and grow. And so do insects who have six legs and lay many different kinds of eggs. This one will hatch into a hungry caterpillar who will grow and grow and grow and climb up a stem and change into this, a chrysalis, and change again one summer morn. That's how a butterfly is born. We know another story called The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carle that has that same kind of story to it. Animals with fur or hair who nurse their young and don't lay eggs are known as mammals or mammalia. The one on the left is a spiny anteater and the other one is the duckbill platypus. But these are two acceptance. They both live in Australia. Chickens aren't the only ones. There's no more to discuss. Everyone who lays an egg is Oviparous. Animals who don't lay eggs have babies born alive, and while well, that's another tale to tell. So we learned that animals who lay eggs are called oviparous. Animals that do not lay eggs are viviparous. So I have a little activity to test your remembrance of oviparous and viviparous. The way I remember it is 
oviparous. O starts that word and O's are kind of shaped like eggs. Viviparous, do not lay eggs. Let's try this activity together. Animals that lay eggs. We're going to circle the animals that lay eggs for our oviparous. Let's see, is a cat oviparous? or viviparous. That's right, it's viviparous. It does not lay eggs. How about a turtle? Is a turtle oviparous or viviparous? Oviparous, it lays eggs. How about a cow? Is a cow oviparous or viviparous? Viviparous, cows don't lay eggs. How about a penguin? We talked about penguins earlier in the school year. Are penguins oviparous or viviparous? Oviparous. How about a chicken? Yes, they lay eggs, they're oviparous. And last, what about a horse? Is a horse oviparous or viviparous? A horse is viviparous. It is not an egg layer. It is not oviparous. Boys and girls, I hope that helped you learn something new today. Those two big words, oviparous and viviparous. Go share that with some adults that you live with. See you soon.